Now, some of the approaches that uh, pilots use that we found, in particular as an instructor, I noticed this. Um, there's really three. They basically all basically use the uh, second segment only data. And uh, the first one here I refer to as an achiever, as, as I'm sure you'll appreciate here in just a moment. So if you're dealing with, a, let's say, a 6.3% gradient, and it goes from uh, 2,000 feet up to 8,000 feet, 6,000 foot climb, that, um, that what a pilot would typically do is he'll uh, immediately refer to the net second segment chart and then find within that second segment chart the uh, climb gradient requirement, 6.3% here, that matches the field elevation and then you can give a, uh, uh, a weight restriction based upon that. Now when we ask pilots to show us what in fact uh, the flight path would look like if they used that weight restriction, it would fall within somewhere within this gray area here. The problem is, is that it doesn't fall within that gray area at all. In fact, it never achieves that type of performance at all. The performance that is created by using that number is, refer is reflected here uh, by the blue dashed line. Notice that it never gets to 8,000 feet. The data that is in that net second segment table stops at a particular altitude. It could be 1,500 feet, could be 400 feet, could go up uh, higher if you have uh, like a 10-minute uh, engine limit on your on your engines. So you you have to understand that the the, the numbers there in the tables uh, give a specific type of performance, and that blue line is what is your what is what you're uh, accomplishing using that weight. The second uh, procedure is uh, found much more throughout the industry. And in fact, no matter what wooden stake we seem to drive through the heart of this, it seems to keep coming back. And it's a kind of a takeoff of the first method. Again, we have the 6.3% gradient, again, up to 8,000 feet. Again, we go immediately to the net second segment table. And you'll notice by my saying it that way is that that's not the first chart you should be going into. But you'll notice here that in this case now, the pilot takes a 6.3% and finds it on the net second segment chart at the 8,000 foot level. And this gives obviously a little lighter weight and the pilot suspects that he'll be able to clear that 8,000 foot gradient by using this weight. Unfortunately, the performance that you're really calculating here is you're calculating the performance you would get when you leave an 8,000 foot pressure altitude airport and the lines would look something like this now. What this is, uh, is providing, uh, and what most pilot pilots typically will use as justification is this, is that they think they can just extrapolate this performance back down to 2,000 feet, that the, 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 the blue line here on the screen was really nothing more than a continuation of uh, performance um, if you were to be at the 2,000 foot level. The problem is there's no uh, engineering data to support this. Uh, in fact, it's, it's entirely a situation where the mind's eye sees what the mind wants. Uh, in fact, the, the performance could look like that, it could look like this. We just don't know. What would really have to happen here is that, uh, theoretically, this uh, performance would have to be translated down to 2,000 feet, adjusted for temperature, adjusted for uh, other conditions that would prevail on the airplane, and then somehow or another, magically, the performance of the aircraft would be uh, just a nice curved uh, line extrapolated up uh, beyond uh, second segment, all in second segment, if you'll notice this here, uh, up to the top of the, uh, to the gradient. There is no engineering data behind this, is, what I'm, is the point I'm trying to make here. In fact, every aspect of this assumption is questionable. We have no data that would support that the, uh, the uh, climb performance that was measured at 8,000 foot could be interpolated back down to 2,000 feet. We have no idea of whether or not the uh, degradation of performance over time is equal to degradation of performance with altitude, which it is not, but which this particular method assumes. So you really have, you're in quite a quandary here, basically 
you're really stretching the limits of uh, the assumptions here to kind of make fun of it a little bit. Um, you're really just simply taking your climb gradient and pinning it on the proverbial tail in the donkey here. So this is why we give it the name, the PTT OTD method. The, um, the last method that I'm going to is actually, and you'll notice I've given it a name, True Flight Path, and I've given it a trademark symbol because uh, one of the competitors out there actually uses this as their trade uh, flight path in their description. And again, it's somewhat of a, a, a takeoff of the previous two. Again, we have a, a climb gradient here. We'll use 6,000 feet, up to 6,000 feet in this case, uh, from sea level. Again, a 6,000 foot climb. And again, we'll go immediately to the second segment chart here. But this time, we're going to find a, a, a set of averages of climb gradients over different altitudes that would average out to 6%. And the idea here is that you will get a hypothetical, uh, nice curved, uh, beautiful symmetry line uh, from uh, your takeoff departure all the way to the top of the climb gradient. Again, there is no engineering data behind this at all. Uh, it's taking second segment data uh, de designed to be limited to a certain altitude and extrapolating it to a higher altitude. Again, as we've all known in training classes starting from the days where we flew, you know, 172, that you can interpolate data in performance charts, but you cannot extrapolate beyond the limits of the performance chart, and that's exactly what they've done here. The reality is, is that the uh, AFM describes not a true flight path, but a net takeoff flight path. And again, this is um, referring back to that legal definition of the term of the flight path that must be followed for single engine or one engine uh, in-op uh, calculations. Again, you'll notice it has four segments, very distinct. And if you overlay the two, you'll see that there's a very different, obvious difference between the two flight paths. One is based upon engineering data for the aircraft. One is essentially a hypothetical, uh, uh, contrived, uh, manufactured a misuse, if you will, of the performance data in the second segment tables. Now the problem again arises back, and we keep coming back to this, is that there is a legal definition of having to use a net takeoff flight path, not a flight path, quote unquote, true flight path. 